It's 1914, and Russia has found itself in a war with half of Europe. According to the Schlieffen Plan, the opportunity for Germany to win was heavily based on Russians taking a very long time to prepare, while Germany could defeat France in the West and take on Russia and win the war. Although the Russians were ready way earlier than expected, it could have in itself been very true. Russia was made up of thousands of different ethnicities who didn't really think the Tsarist government was as cool as the Tsar himself. One of them was Estonian. Estonia was oppressed by the Germanification and Russification policies for centuries, and in the beginning of the 1850s, the Estonian National Waking has been born, a period of the time brought back to Russian authority. However, it was time for World War I. Throughout the war, 100,000 Estonians were drafted, and one-tenth of them died. In 1915, many captured Latvians, forced to work with the Germans, fled to Estonia. The same year, the first island in modern-day Estonia, Rune, was occupied by the Germans. Russia suffered a devastating revolution in March, known as the February Revolution. After a short amount of time, the Russian army weakened severely. The Germans had been coordinating a German air, land, and naval operation scheduled for October 1917 to occupy the West Estonian archipelago. The attack was launched on the 12th of October, when the Germans landed in Thailand in Ussel. The Germans had less success and failed twice to land in Dagu, the second largest island. Once they did, they achieved much success and captured the following day. On October 16th, the Germans captured Ussel. Now, they wanted to capture the last two important islands in the archipelago. The Germans had started sieging the island of Mühn the same day. The Germans and the Russians, as well as the British, met somewhere in the Gulf of Riga. A few hours later, the Russian battleship opened fire. The mighty Russian battleship Slava was advancing and started raining fire upon any eastbound German ship. Meanwhile, Kuning and Kronpich continued east. Everything seemed to be going well for the Slava battleship until the morning of October 17th, when the battleship's front turret became inoperable. This meant the gear wheel could not be moved. Only 11 shots had been fired between the two guns and the turret before the breakdown. The German battleships were unaware of what had happened. Coincidentally, though, King, the first of the Kuring class dreadnoughts, opened fire on Slava and hit the battleship with three shells from its third salvo. Then, just about ten minutes later, two more shells, and another ten minutes later, two even more shells with those left on board. They were ordered to retire to the north in a channel between the islands of Worms and Dagu. However, by then, the engine room was abandoned, and as a result, the battleship Slava sank and was scuttered in the Moon Sound Strait. By the 20th of October, everything had gone south for Russia. The Baltic fleet was begging to pull out from the battlefield, and the island of Mühl has been evacuated. The fighting continued until November. In the end of the battle, the Urschel and the Mühl Islands were firmly in German hands. Meanwhile, the Germans had sent Lenin to create an internal crisis in Petrograd, and that resulted in the Bolsheviks taking over most of European Russia. However, now Lenin had turned on the Germans and tried to start mutinies in the communist revolution in Germany, but weren't able to achieve much success. In December, the Germans tried to negotiate peace with the Bolsheviks, but those broke down in February. With Trotsky's new article, with the Bolsheviks would essentially abandon the territories in the East, but wouldn't make peace either. And it went perfectly. Totally. If you ever find yourself in a war, you should also try as a response to pressure the Bolsheviks to sign it. They landed in mainland Estonia on February 18th. Their first landings were made in Lihula and Vitsu. On the 21st of February, the Germans marched on Hapsal. The following day, they marched on Walk. Meanwhile, Russia had given the government of Estonia autonomy and agreed to set up an Estonian National Council. Later on, the Estonian Salivation Committee was set up. On the 24th of February, in Pärnu, the committee signed up the Declaration of Independence. 
However, it didn't manage to achieve recognition from foreigners and definitely not from Germany. Only a few hours later, Pernu, Dürrit, and Fellin were occupied. The following day, Revel was occupied. On the 4th of March, the last known town taken was Nerva. This put an end to both the democratic regime and the Bolshevik guards in Estonia. Many of the Bolsheviks escaped to Russia, but most of the Bolsheviks who remained in Estonia were trapped, killed, or were taken as prisoners of war. A day earlier, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed, where the Bolsheviks finally recognized the German-occupied territories. However, since the beginning of the war, a maritime blockade was formed on the German coast, meaning that the Germans' resources were slowly starting to run out. However, there were many resources in Estonia that the Germans could use to try and save the economy from crashing. The Baltic Germans and the right-wing politicians were competing for the power over the region. The Germans preferred the Baltic Germans. The leader of the Provisional Estonian Republic was arrested in June 1918, where he was sent to several prison camps in Latvia until he was placed into a camp in Poland until the end of the war. Instead of recognizing Estonia as an independent nation, the Germans thought about setting up a Baltic duchy, including a Baltic National Council, with only 12 spots for the Estonians, 12 spots for the Latvians, and the remaining 34 for the Baltic Germans. And obviously, with it, the official language of the area transformed from Estonian and Latvian to German, freedom of speech was abolished, and heavy censorship spread throughout the territory. The officials were determined by the Imperial German Army. The countless more valuable cities were controlled by the German officers, including Baltic German advisors. Beneath them were local Baltic German landowners, or landlords, and beneath them were rural municipality governments that had been cleansed from the Soviets. Their leaders were most definitely Estonians because the Germans only made up about 10% of the population. Many of them were secretly supporting the former provisional government who had funded the underground state. They had formed a secret armed organization to retake the nation at the right moment. However, now Germany was defeated in the west and as a result had to abandon their territories in the east. You would think that chaos would return to Estonia just as it was before the German occupation, but that really never happened. Thanks to the Germans destroying the Estonian Red Guards local organization, and cleansing left-wing politicians from the power in Estonia had heavily shifted towards the right-wing nation. The former Estonian leaders quickly rose to the top to replace the German's administration, other Baltic and regular German leaders with Estonian ones. Now the Estonians needed an armed force. To do that, they combined the German-formed Home Guard secretive armed organization formed by the underground state, thus founding the Estonian Defense League. By the end of November, 14,500 men joined the Defense League. However, an army was still missing, and to form one, the municipalities and the Defense League conducted mobilization. Meanwhile, the Bolsheviks had also strengthened, and in Soviet-controlled Russia, units of the army were formed. World War I in Estonia had just ended, but another one was about to begin, known as the...